Hi Happy Knitters and welcome back to my channel. My name is Yolanda and in today's video we're going to specifically talk about uh, how I knit my socks uh, two at a time. So if you are a returning viewer you know that I've talked about this in the last few uh, podcasts and if you are a new viewer thank you for tuning in. So in this sock tutorial video, we're gonna sp I'm gonna specifically talk about how I knit two at a time socks. Um, I used worsted weight yarn for this tutorial so that you guys would be able to see a little bit better than using uh, the fingering weight yarn. But the same um, techniques that I use to knit these socks are gonna be the same techniques you're gonna use for knitting um, using fingering weight. I specifically use the Turkish cast on for my socks. Um, and in this tutorial, uh, you're just gonna see the standard toe increase um, that I use. And then also uh, this tutorial features the Flegel heel. And then I just did a regular two by two uh, uh, cuff on this. And then I used uh, Jenny's stretching, surprisingly stretchy bind off for, uh, for binding off these socks. But I wanna iterate that this is the way that I knit my socks two at a time. There are so many variations out there for knitting socks and I don't think, want you to think that my way is the only way. Um, this is just the way that I do it. Um, it's comfortable for me. It's the way that I learned to knit socks. So this is what I know. So I'm gonna show you guys what I know. Like I said, you can have different types of uh, cast on. Um, you also can have different toe increases. You can have different heels. You can have different uh, cuffs. You can have different bind off. Um, bind offs for your cuffs. So like I said, there's a variation of a bunch of different ways uh, to do um, or to knit socks, but I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. And hopefully it's something that you can take away and then you can, you can expound on that. So if you want to learn how to do the flegal heel, but you don't necessarily like the way the toes are done, th these things are all interchangeable. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. So, I think that's probably about it. So if you um, like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe for future videos and hit the notification button. And that way you won't miss any future episodes or uh, video or tutorials from me. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. Okay, thanks guys. So for this tutorial, I used US size seven 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, and since we're doing magic loop, you need at least a 40 inch cord. That's what I use for magic loop. And if you're gonna use fingering weight to make proper socks, then I use a size one 2.25 millimeter. You're also going to need to have two skeins of worsted weight yarn or fingering weight yarn, a locking stitch marker, a progress keeper, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. So for Magic Loop, the starting position is always with your needles oriented and pointing to the right. That is always the starting position for Magic Loop and that's how we're gonna start um, this sock tutorial. So to begin the Turkish cast on, you are going to start with a traditional slip knot. And since we are going to be using fingering weight yarn, um, you're gonna end up casting on eight stitches per needle for a total of 16. So with the slip knot, you're gonna put it on your bottom needle. And with the Turkish cast on, we're gonna start with wrapping the needle if, um, instead of a traditional cast on. So you are going to wrap the needle. In this case, it's going to be eight times because we are going to have eight stitches on the top and eight stitches on the bottom for a total of 16 stitches. And just count your loops to make sure that you have eight loops. And then what we're gonna do once we have eight loops and we've confirmed that we have eight loops on the needle, you're gonna take your, um, your tail end and you're gonna slide that tail in in between the needles just to secure the loops and then you're just going to kind of forget about it until we get to the point where we're getting ready to uh, knit the first round so as you can see here i've got eight loops on the needle and i have secured those loops by pushing them by taking the tail end of that yarn and putting it through the needles 
Now that's for the first sock. Now we're going to we're going to repeat the same process for the second sock. We are going to start with a slip knot, and then we're going to place that slip knot on the bottom needle, and we are going to wrap the yarn eight times around and do the exact same thing we did with the first wraps. Just want to emphasize that when you are wrapping the yarn, you're going to wrap it from the back to the front because I didn't tell you that on the first one. So just continue wrapping till you have eight complete loops on your needle and then take your tail end and put it in between the needles to secure your loops. Okay. So now that we have done that, you can see we've got two sets of loops um, for two sets of socks. So the first thing that we want to do now that we have um, our loops on the needle, we want to pull our bottom needle long. And this is the starting position for Magic Loop. And we are basically going to unwrap that yarn that we had secured because we, we really don't need it at this point. And you are going to insert your needle in between the needle and the cord itself and you are then just going to start knitting and you have your first loop on your needle and you will continue this for the first sock and it could get a little fiddly at times but this is like I said I, this to me is one of the easiest um, cast stones for toe up socks that that you can have so now you've come to the last stitch um, that you have wrapped and now you notice that you still have the slip knot on your lower cord don't worry about that we will address that in just a second so you now go ahead and drop the yarn from the first sock and we are going to repeat the same process for the next sock. So we're going to take off our holding stitch and we are going to insert our needle in between the cord and the needle itself. And then we're going to grab the yarn from the bottom and we are just going to knit those top eight stitches. So now we are approaching the last stitch um, on this needle and also once again the slip knot is still present. Um, we're not going to worry about that until we get ready to start um, knitting the, the other half of the, the needles. So in order to get ourselves back to magic loop ready position you're going to orient your needles uh, clockwise and you are going to now take your top needle and push your needle back into those stitches and it can be a little bit tight especially when you're just beginning um, to uh, do the Turkish cast on and plus for this particular tutorial I use worsted weight yarn so it was actually a little bit um, tighter than um, it probably needed to be so let's go ahead and once again like I said ready position for magic loop is going to be to pull the bottom cord long and now we're going to take that slip knot and we are literally going to just pull it off and drop it we don't need it anymore so now you are going to insert your needles into the first stitch grabbing your working yarn and now we are going to knit the second half of our stitches so once we do the second half of the stitches we have literally completed one round of uh, knitting.
And I would like to encourage you to practice the Turkish cast on. Um, it may take a couple of times for you to get it, but I'm confident that um, you can do it. Cause like I said, it's to me a very uh, simple uh, cast on. And um, yeah, I think you guys, like I said, I think you guys will have no problem getting the hang of it. So now we've knitted the, um, the last stitch on the first socks. Always remember to drop your working yarn from your first sock before you start working on the second sock. And as you can see here, um, we've already completed, you can see that it's gonna be a seamless toe. So now we're ready for the second uh, sock. So remove your slip knot, insert your needle again in between the the cord and your needle and pick your working yarn up and just start knitting with the working yarn. So that first stitch is going to be a little loose so it's a good idea to kind of give it a little bit give the yarn a little bit of a tug just to kind of snug it up so that it's not kind of flopping all over the place. So we're to the last stitch on the needle and guess what you guys have completed one full round of knitting which means that you have successfully completed your Turkish cast on so we're back to to get back to magic loop ready position we take the top needle push it back into the stitches and we are once again going to pull the bottom needle long so we are back to magic loop starting position. But real quick before I pull, pull the bottom needle long, you may sometimes wonder if you, are, if you have completed a round or not. If your tail is hanging on the left hand side of the needle, then you know and you're, that you have completed a full round until you get ready to have enough um, of a toe where you can put a progress marker to mark the beginning of the, of, or the front of the sock. That's what I do. So now we're ready for the increase uh, for our toes and we're going to pull our bottom um, cord long for magic loop and we are going to knit the first stitch and then we're going to increase um, for the second stitch. I use the make one uh, leaning to the left and I actually have a tutorial, a separate tutorial for that and I will put um, a link in the video for you if you need a refresher course on that. But yes, we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, make one leaning left. So you will lift the bar between the two stitches from front to back, and then put that stitch on the left hand needle and then knit that stitch. And then you will have made a make one leaning to the left. So once you've made your increase, you will now just knit all of the stitches on the needle up until, I'm sorry, on the first sock up until the last stitch, and then you will make another make one left, and you'll have made two increases on the first sock. So we're to the last stitch. So go ahead and insert your needle underneath the bar, lift that stitch up and knit that stitch um, off of the left hand needle. And like I said, you will have now made two increases on the first sock. 
So I did want to mention, you can actually do a KFB knit in the front and back. If make one lefts are a little difficult um, to do, um, it will just be a little bit of a different increase, but it's definitely something that you can do. So we're down to the last uh, stitch on the first needle. Don't forget to drop your working yarn from that sock and then pick up your working yarn for your second sock. So now we're just gonna repeat the same thing that we did on the first sock with the second sock. Knit the first stitch, do a make one uh, leaning to the left or a KFB, whatever increase you feel comfortable with. Knit all the way down to the, the last stitch. Before the last stitch, make your next increase and then you will have increased two stitches on this sock. So now we have completed the increase on the uh, first uh, side of both socks. So now we're gonna turn our needles over and we also have to do the increases on the second needle. And then once we've completed that, you have done a complete uh, increase round for um, increasing on your, um, your socks. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video uh, since you've seen how we do the increase on the first half, just repeat it for the second half of the sock. So we are done with our increase row. We need to get back to ready position for magic loop. Our next round is going to be just us knitting an even round, all, all knit stitches with no increases. And as you can see, the toe is already forming um, and we didn't have to do um, any grafting of the toe since we're doing uh, toe up. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a higher, uh, I moved the camera back just a little bit so you can kind of see what the magic loop knitting is like when we're just doing even rounds because uh, the first uh, half of the video has been kind of close up. So this will kind of give you a little bit more of a different uh, view as to how magic loop is, is knit.
So now it's time for us to get back to ready position. We flip our needles over. I want you to notice where I have my thumb for the, uh, the when I'm pulling the, the cord long. I keep my thumb on that bottom needle because that allows for me not to accidentally pull the wrong needles and pull my stitches out. I know that some people have issues with that for magic loop, but I just got into the habit of doing that and therefore it doesn't cause an issue for me because my, my thumb is there so I won't be able to pull the wrong needle. So just continue to knit evenly on the second half of the needle and you will have completed a full round of knitting your stitches even. And so you will just continue to do an increase row and a knit even row until you have the desired number of stitches that you need on each needle. And after that, we'll come back and I wanna show you um, um, a little, a quick segment on how not to accidentally uh, get extra stitches on your needle. Ask me how I know. So when I first started doing Magic Loop, I would always end up with extra stitches on my needle and I couldn't figure out what, what was the reason until I had a little bit more experience and I found out that um, I was not uh, holding my yarn um, in the right place in order to not create an extra stitch. So in this little segment, I wanna show you what not to do in order for you um, to not have the issues that I had when I started uh, magic looping. You always wanna make sure that when you're doing magic loop that your yarn is on the outside of the needle and not on the inside, because if you have your yarn starting position on the inside, you are going to actually end up creating a yarn over, which of course creates an extra stitch. And as you can see um, in this example, um, by uh, the position of the yarn, I have created an extra stitch and you wouldn't even necessarily know it um, if it's your if you're new to uh, magic looping. So you always want to make sure that when you are especially when you're at the beginning of your round that your yarn is located on the outside of the needle so that you will not create uh, that extra stitch. And that's also true for the second sock as well. Just make sure that your that your yarn is always over on, over the top of the of the cord, and you should be fine. But I just wanted to th uh, throw in that that quick little segment for you guys, just so that you won't necessarily have the headaches that I had when I started magic loop magic looping. So now we are done with the increases for our toe. So if, you, if you're knitting with worsted weight yarn, you should have 32 stitches total, 16 on each needle. If you are doing fingering weight, you should have 32 uh, stitches on each needle for a total of 64. I'm gonna go ahead now and take my progress keeper and uh, put it, attach it to the front of my uh, sock because now I will uh, know that whenever I come, whenever the progress keeper is facing me i am at the beginning of the round um, it makes it easier for me uh, so that i don't have to worry about keeping up with that so at this point we are going to which is the easiest part of uh of a sock is we're just going to knit uh, the foot of the sock evenly up until where the foot reaches the leg and i will insert a picture on here uh, so that you'll know uh, uh, where to stop the good thing about uh, toe up socks is you get to try those on as you knit. So you just so what I do is I just continually try on my socks until it reaches uh, where I need it to be. So 
So now you've seen the pictures of where to stop uh, knitting for and get ready to begin the increases for the heel. So just go ahead and knit uh, continuously in the round until the foot reaches the leg and I will meet you back here to talk about the increases for the flegal heel. Okay, so now we've tried on our socks and the now the socks actually reach where they need to be as far as the bend in our ankle and our and our leg. So we are going to knit evenly across the front stitches. We are only going to increase on the back stitches only. So the back stitches are going to grow and the and the front stitches are going to stay the same. So if you are w working with worsted weight yarn, the front stitches will be at 16. If you are working with uh, finger, fingering yarn, it will be 32. So for the flegal heel, you are going to do an increased row and an even row. It's pretty much the same as we did for the, um, the toe increases. You can either increase with a KFB or a make one right or a make one left. Um, and that's, that's really up to you as far as uh, which kind, which increase you want to use on that back needle. And I'll show you a little bit more when we come to that. But basically, like I said, knit across evenly on the, on the front stitches and we're going to increase on the back stitches. For the flegal heel, you are going to increase to two stitches minus the total number of stitches that you have for your sock. So in this case, um, we have 32 stitches um, for a sock. So on the back needle only, we are gonna continue to increase until we reach 30 stitches. So that's 32 minus two, which gives you 30 stitches. For a fingering weight yarn with a 64 stitch count, you are going to increase on the back needle until you reach 62 stitches. And that's 64, of course, minus two, which gives you 62. I will put in the description box below the written instructions for the Flegal Hill. Um, it's on a blogspot.com uh, uh, website. So that way you can have uh, the written instructions if you wanna go uh, line by line. So we're just continuing to knit across uh, the, the front stitches on the first needle uh, evenly and then we'll come to the back and we will get ready to do our first increase for uh, the heel. So here we're getting our needles back into a uh, ready position and we're going to start the increases on the back needles only. So basically you're going to knit one and then you are going to perform um, an increase. I like to do on the back needles, I like to do a make one right. Um, so that the that the stitches will lean to the right and on the left hand of the back sock I like to do a make one left um, So it kind of forms a, a v-shape. That's a personal preference for me You can still do a make one left for the increases or you can also do a, a KFB that is entirely up to you as to how you want to do your increases but once again i have tutorials for all three of those increases and you can check those out um, to see which one you might want to go with for the increases on the back of the uh the heel 
So I'm knitting the first stitch and then I'm going to do a make one right. So I'm going to pick the bar up from the rear and then I'm going to knit the stitch through the front. So now we made our increase and now we are going to knit until the last stitch of this sock and then we will make a increase of a make one left and then we will knit the last stitch and then we will move on and proceed and do the exact same thing for the second sock. Knit one, make one right, knit across to the very last stitch, make one left and then knit the last stitch. Cause I gotta tell you, make one right and make one left, they're kind of hard to get into. So if they're easy, then that means you're probably doing something wrong. Um, that's why I probably would suggest a uh, KFB. If you are a first time sock knitter, it will go much faster and you can, in, you can improve on your socks if you need to um, on your later ones. So now we're just gonna go ahead and do the increases for the second sock. So now at this point, we are going to just knit um, in the round evenly on the front and the back stitches. And so now you will alternate between an increase row and a straight round of knitting until you get to the number of stitches that you need on the back needle. So it'll be 30 for this worsted weight yarn and 62 for, for fingering weight. And as you continue to increase, on the back needles, it will grow into a sh the shape of a V. So we are back and I have finished the increases on the back needle. Um, it should You should have 30 stitches if you're on worsted weight yarn. And so now we have done our increases on the back. 
So what we need to do now is knit across the front stitches evenly to get to the back stitches and we can begin uh, the uh, heel shaping for, uh, of the Flegel heel. So now we are ready to turn the heel of our of our flegal heel actually. And so the setup for this is going to be you want to place a locking stitch marker at the halfway point on the back needle. So since we have 30 stitches on the back needle, you want to place the stitch marker in between uh, at 15 and 15 and if you were um, having worsted weight yarn you would have 62 stitches so you would place it at the 31 uh, stitch mark so this is going to be a really easy heel this is one of the reasons why it's my go-to because I don't have to worry about wraps and turns or anything of that nature and you really actually don't even really need to count for this heel once you get started so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to knit to two stitches past the marker. As you come to the stitch marker, just pass the stitch marker from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. We are then going to knit the next two stitches. And then we are going to perform an SSK on the next two stitches. So that is a slip as if to knit, a slip as if to knit and then put your needle through the front loop of the stitches. Sorry, they got off camera just for a second. And then you're gonna knit those two stitches together, which is basically a decrease. And then you're going to knit one more stitch. And now we're gonna turn our work. And now we are going to slip the first stitch. And then we are going to purl two stitches past the stitch marker. So as you approach the stitch marker, I, I, for me, I just go ahead and I remove the stitch marker. I know that I have to knit, uh, I'm sorry, I have to purl the next two um, stitches. And then after you purl the next two stitches, then you are going to perform, perform a purl two together. So once you do that, then you will go ahead and you will purl one more stitch. So now we are going to turn the work back around. And this is the part that's uh, uh, super easy. So now as you turn the work back around, you, don't forget you're going to slip the first stitch. And now you are going to knit 
and you sh will now be able to see a gap where you did your first slip slip knit stitch and once you get to that gap every time you get to the to the gap you are now going to knit uh, slip slip those slip slip knit those stitches together now here's our first gap on the knit side so we're gonna do a slip slip to close the gap and then we are going to knit one more past the slip slip knit and now we are going to turn our work so this is going to be what we're going to do uh, for the rest of, of the heel. You slip the first stitch, we're going to purl to the gap. We're going to, when we get to the gap, we're going to purl two together and then purl one more. And as you can see, you can see the gap very well so that you should not have any problems locating the gap. So that's why you don't ever have to worry about counting. It's more of a visual uh, thing, which I absolutely love. It makes it so much easier. So now we're back to the gap. We are going to close the gap by doing a purl two together because we are on the purl side. Knit one more. I'm sorry, not knit, purl one more past the purl two. Turn your work. You are going to slip the stitch again. And you just continue this theme until you have worked all of the stitches on this first sock. So we'll come back through and I'll show you what to do when we get to the last of the stitches. and we are back so we're almost finished turning the heel of our first sock and so now we are on the last the last row and I, and we're on the, the knit side so we're going to slip our stitch and then we're going to knit to the end of this row and i want to show you what we're going to do you still have a gap at the beginning of this row but we will work that gap when we come back around to the end step of our socks and I'll, and I'll uh, talk about that a little bit more in detail in just a little bit. So we continue to knit down. And so now we are approaching our last gap on this row. So we are going to perform our last SSK. And then we are going to knit that last stitch. So we are not going to go back and pick up those gaps at the beginning of the row, we're gonna leave those gaps, we're gonna take care of those when we come back around. So now you are literally pretty much done turning the heel of your first sock, and now you're gonna to go to the heel of your second sock. And you are literally going to do the exact same thing that you did for the first sock. You're gonna find your midpoint, which in this case is 15 stitches because we're working with uh, 30 stitches on the back needle. I wasn't gonna show the Flegel heel on the second uh, sock, but I think I will just because the more I think that you see it, I think the more it will become uh, familiar to you. And now I'm just adjusting the light because I wanna make sure that you guys have a better, better angle. So once again, we are going to knit to two past the stitch marker.
So once again, we're gonna go ahead and slip the stitch marker over. We're gonna knit two stitches, and then we are going to SSK the next set of stitches. And be sure to remember to go ahead and always knit one past your decrease. We're gonna turn our work. Now we're on the purl side. And with um, Magic Loop, you will have to occasionally um, get your um, <laughs> yarns detangled, but that's part of the nature of two at a time. So go ahead and purl. You can take your stitch marker off at this point and make sure that you purl the next two um, stitches after the stitch marker. Because I kind of consider these to be the, sort of like the setup rows. And so now we're going to purl our two together. And then we are going to purl one more stitch. So now that that is done, now you should be able to visually see the gaps as you get ready to, um, to knit. We're gonna slip the first stitch and I'm showing you where the gap is so that you can visually see it. And then you're just gonna knit up to the gap, do an SSK, Knit one more and then turn your work again. So now we're back to the purl side row and we are going to slip our stitch and then we are going to purl to the gap, knit a purl two together, purl one more, and then turn our work.
continue to uh, work the flegal heel as you have seen. And then once you have come to the last of um, the decreases, I will join you back here again to show you what to do next. So we are on the last uh, decrease uh, row for the second sock and we will continue to knit down to the last decrease. So we're down to the last decrease and I actually ended up, <laughs> let me unpick that stitch. So we're down to the last decrease and I'm sorry that I got this off the of camera, um, but I'm trying to fix what I just messed up on. So we're gonna do the SSK for the last one. And then we're going to knit the last stitch. So now we're going to turn our work back around because um, we still have to take care of uh, that decrease at the beginning of the at the beginning of each of the heel. We've got a decrease that we still need to take care of. So let's turn our work back and let's get back to uh, starting position. And now we're basically going to knit across the instep, the front of the foot, uh, just knit all the stitches across until we get back around to the back uh, heel. So now we're back to the back needle and as you can see we still have a gap on the right on the uh, le right sock and the left sock that we need to take care of on this round. So now let's go ahead and close up the gap. So we are going to start off by um, knitting the first stitch as normal. And what I should have done on this sock, I should have done an SSK to close up the gap, but I, I got absent-minded and I did a knit two together, which, you know, to me is not that big of a deal, but just, uh, I just wanted to show you, tell you the correct way. I should have done an SSK um, because that's what we did on the, um, the knit side for the decreases. So I did the correct one on the second sock, but just FYI. So we're gonna, once you do the, that decrease, you've closed up the gap and you are going to knit uh, to the end of the first sock. And you don't have to do anything to the, uh, the end of the first sock because we took care of the decreases um, on that last round.
And look guys, we have successfully turned the heel on the first sock. So now we're on to the second sock. We're gonna close up the gap on that sock. And this time I'm actually going to perform an SSK, which I should have done on the first sock. Now once you finish this decrease on this sock and you knit to the end of the sock, you actually still have two more stitches on each sock because we are still not back down to the original set of numbers um, that we had. So when you come back around, we're going to knit evenly on the front uh, needle, the instep, and then we actually have to perform uh, two more sets of decreases on each of the socks and then we will be back down to the original number on those back on that back needle Okay, so let's just go ahead and knit across the front uh, instep of the, the sock, and then I'll see you back on the back, the, the back heel. So now we're back to ready position and we've you see that the heels have been done. Like I said, we still have two more stitches on each sock that need to be decreased for us to get back down to our original number. So uh, in this case, I do go ahead on the first uh, two stitches, I just knit those two together. And then I knit across uh, to the last two stitches and I knit those two together and now I'm back to my original set of number of stitches and I do the exact same thing for uh, the second sock. So now we are officially done with the decreases on uh, the first sock. So do the exact same thing for the second sock, knit the first two stitches together, knit across to the last two stitches, and knit those two stitches together as well. So now we're back to ready position once more. So now you can begin uh, knitting in the round because uh, now we're actually starting the leg of the sock. So you can at this point try on the sock to see how the heel feels to you. 
and you can just continue to knit in the round for as long as you want to for the length of the sock that you want it to become. So that's, like I said, that's one of the advantages of uh, toe-up socks is you get to try them on and you can knit uh, the legs as, as long as you want. So for this tutorial, I decided to do short socks so that I could go ahead and show you guys the rest of the tutorial. So now I've, I've got the sock to the length that I want as far as uh, the leg, and now it's time for us to start the ribbing. And in this case, you can put in any type of ribbing that you want. Um, you can do a two by two ribbing, you can do a one by one ribbing. Um, that is absolutely up to you as to what type of ribbing you would like to do. In this case, I did two by two ribbing. And I'll show you a little bit of that. So two by ribbing, of course, is a knit two, purl two, um, all the way around. So that, I mean, the ribbing part of the sock is uh, fairly easy as well. Like I said, it's just knit two, purl two. If you were doing one by ri one ribbing, it would be uh, knit one, purl one. And as far as the ribbing is concerned, that's also a personal preference as to how many rows of ribbing you, you like to go. So for a, a regular sock with fingering weight, I like to do between 16 to 20 rows of ribbing. Um, I can't remember how many I did on uh, this particular worser weight sock, but I actually kind of just tried it on um, to see if it was to my liking. So continue the ribbing on the second sock and just continue the ribbing to the amount of rows that you would like and I will meet you back here for the bind off.
So just continue knitting, um, doing your purl two knit twos or your one by one ribbing in the round until you have accomplished the amount of ribbing that you want. So I have completed the ribbing for the sock and I'm going to use, um, I did use Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off uh, to bind off these socks. And how you perform that um, bind off is you basically start by knitting your first stitch as you as, as you normally would. The second stitch, you are actually going to do a reverse yarn over, and that's what's going to give you that extra um, yarn in your bind off. And you knit the second um, the second stitch, and then you pass the first two stitches over the last stitch. You can do them one at a time, or you can uh, do them together as I am doing them here uh, for this tutorial. Sorry for the blurriness of the, of the video. Because we're doing, um, because I did two by two ribbing, you kind of want to stay in pattern for the, um, for the ribbing. So the second one is going to be a yarn over with a purl stitch. And then you are going to pass those two stitches over that last stitch that is on the needle. And you will continue in, in pattern for this. Guys, I want to apologize. My camera cut off during the last part of the taping of my tutorial for the Jenny's uh, Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off, but there are, are other tutorials out there um, that you can reference, or if you like, I can do a separate tutorial on how to do uh, that bind off as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, um, and I hope that it's helpful in your uh, desire to knit two at a time socks. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks.